teams everywhere are dealing with a serious problem. A productivity problem. It's no secret, and it's nothing to be ashamed of. Most tech is too complicated, there are too many time-consuming tasks, and teams aren't getting the info they need to close deals and connect with customers. Don't worry though, HubSpot's customer platform can help. It was built to save time and make your job easier so you can get back to building your business. No more hours wasted on time-consuming tasks, no more chasing down prospect info, no more one system for this, another system for that. HubSpot can help you find leads, reach prospects, and deliver the insights you need to convert them to customers, all in one place. Plus, HubSpot AI can literally do more of your work for you so you can focus more on scaling your business because HubSpot knows you have some big growth goals. And they're here to make your productivity problem no problem at all. Visit HubSpot.com to learn how they can help you grow better. Happy Friday, everybody. It's April 5th. I'm John Weigel here with Mark Dent, and this is The Hustle Daily Show. The public has often been tapped to help states and governments fund sports stadiums. With a mix of public and private funds, billions of dollars have been collected from taxpayers for these stadiums. And now in places like Kansas City, it seems like we're finally seeing some backlash. So what exactly is happening in Kansas City, and is this the start of something bigger against public stadium subsidies? We'll get into that in a bit, but first, let's give you the hits and headlines today in business and tech. To start us off, Apple hasn't given up on a shiny new product after scrapping its EV plans in February. The company is reportedly working on mobile robots that could follow users through their homes. Next, speaking of failed car projects, Ghost Autonomy, an open AI-backed company making autonomous driving software, shut down after raising almost $220 million. Next, moving over to Jeff Bezos. He dropped some pocket change, about $90 million, on a third estate in South Florida's Indian Creek, bringing in his total investment in the village to $237 million, or just known as maybe a third of that checking account. Next, NASA chose three companies to submit proposals for lunar vehicles. One company will ultimately be selected to build an autonomous vehicle capable of traveling 9.3 miles per hour to help astronauts explore the moon. Now that's cool. And finally, Disney Plus said it will begin cracking down on password sharing in the coming months. Disney similarly limited account sharing for Hulu, and competitor Netflix saw about 100,000 new signups directly after initiating its own limitations on password sharing. Mark, we talked a bit about streaming earlier this week. Uh, What are your thoughts on this uh, password sharing crackdown? You know, I sort of get why the companies have been doing it. You know, Netflix obviously showed that it didn't lead to some catastrophic damage for them. And so I can understand why Disney and Hulu are now thinking about it. But I think just as it was when Netflix, it's just a failure to understand the way Americans live now. Your family isn't necessarily the people who are with you in your house. It's oftentimes somebody who lives in another state. It goes without saying that people have kids who go off to college. And I mean, they should not have to pay for their own Netflix account. It's unsurprising, but it's nevertheless still very annoying. Yeah, definitely annoying. I mean, we talked about it earlier this week that a lot of these companies are pretty desperate to be profitable now. So, I mean, this crackdown makes a lot of sense to me, too. It's just another way to kind of squeeze out that money from the service that they're already providing. I mean, I personally haven't gotten any messages to refrain. So, yeah, you know, not that I do, not that I do. But. Right, right. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, my dad still uses my Netflix account sometimes. And I think it works for him sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. And I do think Netflix is starting to get wise. Mm-hmm. I have been getting a message from them every once in a while that asks, do you want to pay for another account? <laughs> to which I just hit the back button. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> uh, straight to trash. <laughs> Try again later. All right, on to the big story today. Today's story is about the big business of stadium funding. Often a mix of public and private funds, it seems that the public part of that isn't exactly interested in playing along anymore. So Mark, what happened in Kansas City and do you see this stadium backlash continuing overall? Yeah, so for a little bit of perspective, Kansas City is where I'm originally from. I'm from the Kansas City area. 
And I mean, it's one of the most sports mad kind of metros in the entire country, I would say. And and not only that, they've had the sort of good fortune of the Chiefs who've won three of the last five Super Bowls. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was, you know, the Royals who have been not as successful, but they did win a World Series just a few years ago. The Royals wanted a new downtown stadium. Chiefs wanted to do some renovations to their stadium. And, you know, to do that, they were seeking taxpayer funding, which they've received for, you know, the better part of 50 years. And they've specifically received this kind of sales tax money that pumps in about $50 million per year in recent years. So quite a bit. And they wanted voters to approve something like that again. And that came to vote on Tuesday and it failed terribly. Wow. Like 58% of voters in Jackson County, Missouri, which is the county that encompasses Kansas City and some suburbs, said no. Wow. That's kind of surprising. We were talking about a bit earlier because you did just say that the Chiefs have won three of the past five Super Bowls. The Royals, although maybe not as successful, are no slouch either. You would think that people of such a sports-minded city would want to invest in another stadium, but I guess not if it costs them more taxes. With all these stories with stadiums, there's oftentimes a lot of just odd kind of local quirks that can like change the shape of these votes. And that's definitely what happened here to an extent, because I mean, to just discuss these problems very quickly, there was like this weird feud that's been happening between the county executive of Jackson County, who used to play for the Royals Mm. and the sports teams. There was the decision by the Royals to pick this site in downtown Kansas City in like this artsy neighborhood that kind of got built up on its own over the last 20 years and they didn't want a stadium. They felt like it was going to kind of destroy what they built. And then on top of that, the Royals and the Chiefs, they literally just announced these plans in mid-February, like six weeks ago. So there was not a lot of time to digest what they were talking about. It led to this very kind of garbled rollout of their messaging, according to a lot of Kansas Cityans who I spoke with. And there was like all these just like little things that just kept building up. But then when you see the big picture, it's also just like you were saying, paying tax dollars to private companies. And that used to be something that was taken for granted if you look back just 20 years ago. And to be clear, it still happens all the time, whether it's sports or just like a big corporation. But there's just these different kind of political movements that sweep across left, right, throughout the whole spectrum of people who just are far less inclined to give tax money to rich corporations. And I think that sort of energy really was present in Kansas City. Which might be a good thing, I'm thinking, given that stadiums have often been subsidized by taxpayers in some way. And now, finally, there's a bit of a reckoning, at least in the United States, with this whole idea. These things have been studied over and over just because sports are so popular. And I think economists tend to be sports fans, I guess. But something like $33 billion has been contributed by taxpayers to build or renovate stadiums from 1970 to 2020. That's a lot of money. And that wouldn't necessarily be as much of an issue if the return on investment was there. And that has never been clear. Teams will say that they pump in hundreds of millions of dollars to the economy per year, just to like a local economy. But economists have said that's really not the case for a long time. And while nobody would doubt that there is an economic impact from having sports in a town, it just may not be as much as say, you know, $50 million a year, which is about how much that tax kicks in in Kansas City, for instance. Or if it is greater than $50 million a year, it's unclear the actual impact from those sports teams. Where does it filter down to? Is it actually helping working people, middle class people of Kansas City and other places? The general public has these questions and a lot of teams have been ill-equipped to provide good answers. So if the public were to vote against this in other places, who is going to pay for the stadium slash will there be a stadium if the public doesn't go along with these kind of things? So in bigger markets like Los Angeles and New York, the stadiums there have been privately financed for the most part, if not entirely, like SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California. There's MetLife, you know, which is in the Meadowlands in New Jersey. And so those are examples of where, yeah, teams have just paid for it. But those are pretty unusual examples. I mean, the the majority of stadiums have at least some public funding and sometimes a lot of it, like uh, in Tampa, They're going to be working on a new stadium for the NFL Buccaneers, and that's going to be entirely publicly funded. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I know. And in Nashville, there's going to be $1.2 billion of public funding going to a new football stadium there, which is a mix of state and local dollars. 
that's an incredible amount of money. And that didn't even go to vote. Like that was decided by legislators. Wow. Same with Buffalo, which is going to have hundreds of millions going to a new football stadium. That was decided upon by local politicians. So sometimes it doesn't even go to the people. But, you know, this Kansas City thing is worth paying attention to. And I'm sure a lot of team owners are paying attention to it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, these votes are dictated by so many different local quirks. So it's hard to tell if it could be a national trend, but it should definitely make sports owners at least a little bit more nervous than they are. Yeah, just a beat or two of sweat down the face would be nice, maybe. (laughs) And something I wanted to finish up with, just to ask you this, because it seems like a lot of new stadiums are being proposed or are being constructed. How sorely are these new stadiums needed in your mind? Do they actually need a new baseball stadium in Kansas City? Do the Tennessee Titans actually need a new football stadium? Like, What is the, I guess, correlation between finally abandoning this old stadium and moving into a new stadium? Well, the answer to that is usually no. Um, <laughs> they don't need one. In Kansas City, though, for instance, like the Royals ownership has claimed that there are some concrete issues that make it much harder to save But that's disputed by a different architectural firm that just did a report on it a few years ago and and found that it was actually in pretty solid shape. Plus, the stadium right across from it where the Chiefs play was made with concrete at the same time and, you know, seems to be doing fine for them. They just want to renovate it. So uh, there's usually not a need for new stadiums. It's, It's usually that the owners want to just try to, like, make their franchise more attractive. Their big payday comes someday down the line when they sell the team. And so if you have like a newer, more state-of-the-art facility in some way, then it's going to make the franchise more valuable and give them a larger payday somewhere down the road. And even like in the interim when they're just kind of owning the team. And so when you think about these economic impacts I was talking about earlier that are always controversial, it's especially when teams are just thinking about moving to a new place within a city because it's like they're already making an economic impact with whatever stadium they have. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, how much more can you make if this new stadium gets built that comes with all this taxpayer funding? That's when it becomes even more questionable. Mm -hmm. And the old stadium grounds, what happens to them? Then there's kind of this whole conversation of, is it just going to be sitting there? Are you going to turn it into a mall? Like, is it a parking lot now? Who knows? Right. Yeah, just put like a huge Spirit of Halloween (laughs) store there, you know? Yeah, Spirit Halloween. That actually would be preferable, a stadium-sized Spirit Halloween. I think with how busy those stores get three days before Halloween, it could work. (laughs) All right, and that's going to do it for us today. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the Hustle Daily Show. And you can head to the link in the description of this podcast to vote for the Hustled newsletter in the Webby Awards. We are a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig, and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, go get yourself signed up at the hustle.co slash email, and we'll see you later. Hey, everybody, this great new podcast just came out, and I can't wait to tell you about it. It's called The Next Wave, AI and the Future of Technology, and it's hosted by Matt Wolf and Nathan Lands. And of course, it's brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. You can catch The Next Wave with Matt Wolf and Nathan Lands, who are leading AI creators who are your guiding light in the AI and technology frontier. AI technology is transforming the way we do business, and the media landscape is a bit fragmented, but the next wave strives to be the leading podcast on AI technology and how you can apply it to growing your business. You can listen to the next wave wherever you get your podcasts.